What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and we are here with the week's hottest topics. Have not done this in two weeks, you guys. It, 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 it doesn't seem like it's been that long, but it's been two weeks since I've done a hot topics video. Last week, you guys know I was moving, so I just didn't do anything last week. The week before that, it was me dealing with the apartment situation. And I do want to say thank you to everyone who has said anything kind to me. So I did have to get out of the apartment, but it's okay. You know, I'm going to go look at an apartment tomorrow. And then I have an interview that I'm doing virtually as well. And then, you guys, we are almost at monetization. So a lot of good stuff is coming, you guys. And I know that with working, I need to just save up for, you know, because with actually... We'll talk about that in just a minute. So um, this is the week's hottest topics, you guys. So these are the hot topics for the week of June 20th through June 25th. Wow, June is almost over and it's almost July. And my birthday is in July. But yeah, you guys, um, with that being said, let's talk about what's hot and what's trending this week. Right, you guys so um before we even talk about the trending topics just a minute ago what i was telling you guys about so with me almost being in monetization i know i need to get a job just for a little bit then once we get to monetization we have to focus on this as well because I'm, I'm giving you guys a little bit of an update with graduate school so unfortunately i did not get accepted this fall but i still have it in me i still can you know reapply next semester and I spoke with someone at my school. She gave me some great advice to do. She told me to take, you know, either GRE or GMAT test to kind of boost, you know, make myself look a little bit better, which they liked me, but there were some things that, you know, didn't look 100% good. Work on my um, my um, admissions letter, you know, go a little bit in depth with that. So that's what, we'll, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna work on that and then I'm gonna reapply I have to go look at the website and see when it opens, but I don't think it opens until the towards the end of the year. So we're gonna do that. So once we get YouTube to monetization, I'm gonna get back into doing post. Well, Postmates is gone, so I'm gonna do Uber Eats. And if I get this job, we'll do that, and we're just gonna save money. And that's what we're gonna do until it's you know until if I do get the job until you know we can maneuver and do other things. But yeah, you guys, that's just a little bit of update on what's going on in my life right now. Um, so with the channel, the videos, they look different, you guys, which I know you guys know that I'm filming in my car. They're different because of where I'm staying at currently. I'm staying with my family in my hometown, and I have little cousins that are seven years old. And it's kind of hard to tell a seven-year-old to kind of calm down and be quiet for just a little bit. So... That's why the videos are usually the next day. So it's gonna be that way until I move into my new apartment, whenever that is, don't know. I haven't figured out what my moving date is gonna be because again, my birthday is coming up and I wanna have fun for my birthday. But yeah, you guys, um, let's go ahead and just jump into these stories that I gotta talk about this week. All right, you guys, so the first story that I want to talk about Let's go ahead and talk about Nick Cannon real quick. So, Nick Cannon, on Father's Day, his latest, you know, see, I hate the term baby mama. I really do hate that term. But I mean, that's really what she is, is a, a baby mama at this point. But the latest woman to carry Nick Cannon's child, it, it was officially confirmed on Father's Day that he is, in fact, the father of this new baby and um you know they, they did the photo shoot you know i was one of those people a few weeks ago when we was when we discussed the last the twins that he just had has he those twins are born when we discussed those twins you know we were like well you know he has the money he has the means he can afford these kids and then you know we got the we we she, we, t we talked about this baby that's on the way soon a few weeks ago as well now i'm kind of backtracking just a little bit 
because it's kind of the way we talk about future. It's the way we talk about who else, the your futures. Your who else has a him? Um, doesn't that boy Blueface have a lot of kids? I don't know him that well, but it's it's kind of like those guys. We talk about them. Now, there is a, a distinct difference between them. Like I said, Nick Cannon has the means and the you know the means to take care of his kids, but at the same time, a kid needs more than just monetary things. Kids need emotional. You know, kids you need need you to be there physically, emotionally. And with Nick Cannon having seven kids, with how many, however many different women it is that's next to impossible unless you're going to move all the ladies into one household and you guys are going to be basically sister wives unless that's what this situation is going to be nick cannon is going to have a difficult time with going from he, you, like when it comes to the kids different different house you're gonna to have to jump from different households like how can you say you are an effective father when you're not under the same roof with your kids. So in a nutshell, those ladies are technically single mothers. Now they're not actually single mothers, but what I mean in that, in that way of saying it, they're in a single parent, li literally they're living in a single parent household. They're not living in a household where there's a mother and there's a father. So like I said, those kids are going to be missing. They're gonna have the love and support of their mother but they won't have, well, and I don't, I'm not saying that they won't have it from their father, but it won't be when they wake up in the morning, their father is there. When they go to sleep at night, he's there to tuck them in. Like that. And I saw on, I don't know if this was a shade room or if this was, I saw this earlier today that his father said he's anti-abortion. Okay, nobody said anything about you having abortions, but why not use a condom? I don't get it. Like, I really don't get it because I, honestly, when it comes to me, I just feel for those kids' psyche because those kids are the ones that's going to suffer in the long run. The kids are the ones who are going to suffer. It's not going to be Nick. It's not going to be any of the women. It's the kids, like I said. And then think about it. Like, when the kids grow up, so they're all going to be around the same. Most of them are going to be, especially the twins and this one right here, those babies are going to be the same age so when your kids start going to school and they have so say you say one child gets into band say one gets into cheerleading at this school say one gets into football at this school say one gets into a drill team at this school what are you gonna do when their schedules conflict oh how do I do that how do I go here how do I go there you know what I'm saying Y'all get what I'm saying? I hope what I'm saying is making sense. I mean, I know you can say the same for people who have kids, um, you know, who have multiple kids, and the kids are all within the same age range. I get you can say that as well for, but at that, but it's it's still different because if it's a husband and a wife and they have more than one child, they can split their time up. But with this situation, it's gonna be kind of hard. It's going to be hard because I don't, again, like I said, I don't know where all these women live. They could be in different states. They can be in different cities. It's a mess. I pray for those kids. That's it. Let me know what you guys think about this whole Nick Cannon situation. We'll discuss it in the comment section below. All right, you guys. Next up, let's talk about Trick Daddy dollars aka florida evans because that's who that look like you florida evans looking ass like let's keep it real so i don't know what crawled up tricks ass the other day when he got on clubhouse which clubhouse i thought i didn't know people still use clubhouse see i never got into clubhouse i, I wasn't interested in it nothing, nothing like that i just didn't feel like it was for me so trick got on clubhouse with some other haters now I want to say this, you know, Trick is entitled to his opinion. And I'm also entitled to my opinion of you, Trick. So Trick and some other haters got on Clubhouse and they wanted to talk about Beyonce. I was like, oh, 
We're talking about Beyonce of all people. Okay. You was really desperate for some attention, so Love and Hip Hop must be... Okay, you were really desperate for some attention. You must need a storyline on Love and Hip Hop Miami, or y'all might be getting ready to film Family Reunion. I don't know. But I'm like, okay, Trick, you needed some attention, so you went down to the to Beyonce's internet to, dis, to talk about her. She ain't said S-H-I-T about you. But you gonna go on her inter, Beyonce's internet and talk about Beyonce, Giselle, Nose Carter. I just felt some type of way about that. And my spirit, y'all know, I love me some Beyonce. Beyonce is my girl. Like, I cracks my jokes about Beyonce, but that's what that be, jokes. Cause it's all love over here. Now, before I get into, you know, Florida Evans, the beehive, Oh. The things that y'all do, I just don't understand it. Like, y'all go, like, again, like I said, I love Beyonce, but I go to the extent that these people have done, because I saw people go on Trick, on Trick's um, website, you know, where his, um, not website, but they gave some reviews about his restaurant down there in Miami. Childish is what it, if, I mean, if you looked up childish in a dictionary, you would see that crap in the dictionary. Y'all are talking to, y'all are giving his restaurant negative reviews when you've never been there. Now, yes, did he say something bad about our girl? Yes. Can we, can we roast him? Can we, you know, read him? Yes. Can do it all day. We could pull up that picture of him from his green screen of On Love and Hip Hop in Miami when he had that, that, that terrible hairline, which I might do that. I might do that in post editing. We might show y'all, we might put that picture right up here somewhere. I'm gonna look for that picture. I'm gonna look for it because we're gonna put it up here. I'm gonna look for it. Um, but yeah, to go put those negative reviews on his restaurant that I don't agree with, that I think is crossing the line. I think we're going too far at that point with that situation. I think we're going a little too far. Now, trick back to your Florida Evans looking ass. For you to sit here and say Beyonce can't sing, I was like, oh, you chose murder today. You chose murder. You didn't choose violence, you chose murder. You chose to assassinate your... I don't know what Trick was thinking. Again, like I said, Trick must have wanted some attention when he said this. Like Trick really wanted some attention Trina, Trina had to put out, you know, she left, she let Trick sit out there and burn on that, you know, on that, on that, he, she let him fry, because she said Beyonce is, and will always be, the queen, you know, in certain terms, yes, she will be, but Trick, really Trick, really, then he had some things to say about Jay-Z, um, I didn't hear what he said about Jay-Z, I was more focused on Beyonce and the fact that she can't sing. So Trick then he did an interview. He didn't change. He, he still didn't. He didn't double down on it. But then later that night he doubled down on it, talking about, well, Beyonce can't sing, sing. Okay, I've heard people say that she can't really just sing like that. You know, she's not a Whitney Houston. She's not a Mariah Carey. She's not a Patti LaBelle. I mean, let's be real. Patty screams when she sings. Patty screams. But whatever. But Trick. Let me ask you a question, Trick. Florida Evans. When is the last time you had a hit? When is the last time he had a hit? The last song that I remember from Trick is Let's Go. Let's Go. Let's Get It. It got a little John in it. That's the last song I remember from him. And some of your biggest hits that you got has the baddest in it, the baddest B in it, Trina. So yeah, I mean, and I'm not gonna take away from Trick, you know, from the 99s and the 2000s, he was hot. But you ain't hot now. But you really fixed your lips to say that Beyonce can't sing. You really fixed your raggedy lips. Like I said, y'all, he must be looking for a storyline gotta be looking for a storyline for Love and Hip Hop Miami. 
because they got to be in um production at some they got to be in production she can't sing you lost your rabbit mind when you talk about that <laughs> beyonce can't sing but look at i mean if i could play like if i could play these albums for beyonce that i got let me think about what albums like oh i wish i could play this album I wish I could play for you Rocket. Like, I would love to play Rocket for you just so you could hear her singing on that. You're talking about she, you know, she doesn't um, write her um, songs. Okay, Trick. Stop being a hater. Because that's literally what I feel like happened. Trick and those people that was in that clubhouse, y'all just wanted to be haters that day. Y'all would, something just crawled up your butt. And you said, ooh, who can we hate on? Let's hate on Beyonce. Beyonce. We gonna hate on you just for the day. Why hate? Why be haters? Ooh. I just can't believe Florida Evans tried it like that. Cause Florida Evans, you really tried it, girlfriend. Like, you really, really tried it. Tried it is actually the understatement for what you did. Tried is literally the understatement of what you did. Hello. All right, forget it. Um. Yeah. Yeah, you tried it. Desperately. Desperately. Girl, if you ever had any hopes of wanting to work with her, you just shot those. You just really shot those chances down to hell. Cause, yeah. Yeah, trick. Should have minded. You know, you should have just said. You could have said Sierra can't sing. You could have said Sierra can't sing. You could have said Ashanti can't sing. You could have said J Lo can't sing. You could have said Rihanna can't sing. Oh no, you can't say Rihanna can't sing because the, the Navy will come after you. You could have said Sierra. You could have said J Lo. You could have said um, Sierra, J Lo, Ashanti. Who else can he say that can't sing? That people have said for years can't sing. Um. Who else? That's about it that I can think of. If you guys can think of anybody else, let me know. But yeah, you could have said those three names. and Nobody would have said cat, dog, or boo to you. They would have agreed, probably would have agreed with you. But you go in and say the biggest name you can think of. The biggest name in music. Beyonce. Beyonce? I'm thinking about that meme. Well, actually, it's not even a meme. The scene in um, Flavor of Love when the hottie said that people call her Beyonce <laughs> and New York said, Beyonce, you look like Luther Vandross. Beyonce, I'm sorry that an ugly ass bitch like this would say she looked like you. <laughs> but yeah, he tried it. Like he really, really tried it. Maybe he wanted people to come to his restaurant. Like I said, maybe he needed a storyline. I don't know. Because it's just very random that you pick out of, out of anybody that you could have picked. You know what? You could have said Janet Jackson. Because people talk about she whispers. Wow. Okay. Okay. You know what, Trick? You can have it. Hopefully... It was worth it. I hope it was worth it. I, I, I really hope it was worth it. Really hope it was worth it for you. But yeah, that's it, you guys. Let me know what you guys thought about, you know, Trick, Florida Evans, Mucinex, Mucinex Monster looking ass, saying that Beyonce cannot sing on Beyonce's internet. Let me know what y'all think about that. Speaking of Beyonce, girl, I hope you're working on the album. I really hope you're working on the album sometime soon. Then we can get a concert, you know, because I really, really want to go to a concert. So I'm going to tell you guys, like, some concerts that I really want to go to. I definitely, I've already been to a Beyonce concert, but I want to go again. I've never been to a, I want to go to a Carrie Underwood concert. Yes, I love country music. And I also want to go to a Bruno Mars concert. Like, I've had plenty of opportunities to go see Bruno Mars in concert. But it always fell by the wayside. 
But yeah, that's it, you guys. Let, again, like I said, let me know what you guys think about Trick. Florida Evans, Mutant X Monster looking ass. Let me know what you guys think, and we will move it forward. Oh, God. All right, you guys. Next, let us talk about... What are we talking about next? Let's talk about T-Pain, and let's talk about Usher. Actually, before we get into that, let's read Megan McCain. Actually, nope. We will read Megan McCain while we talk about this. So there's this Netflix documentary that T-Pain did, right? Now, I haven't saw it. I might actually watch it tonight, but I have saw the clips from the documentary. And, you know, T-Pain and Usher were good friends with each other at one point. And T-Pain said that he was on a plane of all places and sleep. Like, dude, you're on a plane and you call and wake him up? To basically, in a nutshell, tell the man that he s fucked up music by doing auto-tunes, introducing auto-tunes. I mean, auto-tunes have been out for, I mean, auto-tunes was out before T-Pain. Like, there are a lot of songs that I've listened to in the, in the 90s that you can hear the auto-tunes on. Like, the Sheer song, Do You Believe in Life After Love? That is heavily out. That song is auto tuned. Like, it's auto tuned. And, you know, this is just one of those things where you got to think about what you say to people and how you say it to people. Because your words, your words have repercussions, ramifications, whatever you want to say. They have, they can have consequences, they can have effects. They can, they can do damage to people because T-Pain said that he suffered a 40-year um, depression because of that that comment that Usher made to him about you know fucking up music which you know when auto tunes came out it was something like I said I had heard it before but it, it was kind of interesting you know it, it, it you know you would see a lot of people especially around the time that T-Pain first came out you would see people who were doing auto tunes who couldn't sing a couldn't sing for for you know anything, and I'm trying to think of somebody because I'm trying to think has do I know do I do is, blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to think if there's any artists that I know who have you know done auto tunes to make their voices sound better, and then when you go live they can't sing ah Cassie. Now, I'm not going to say Cassie used auto-tunes, but we all know Cassie. Bad voice. E. That voice ain't all the way there. Um, Ashley Simpson, you guys remember when she was on SNL, right? And she was doing the hold down when the backing track kept playing and she wasn't singing. <laughs> Ashley Simpson, but that wasn't a situation of auto-tune. I don't know what that was without Ashley Simpson. I don't know what that was, but I remember her on that stage, you know, doing a hold down because she didn't want to sing live. Is she a big, is she one of those people of auto tunes? Let me know in the comment section, guys, because that one I don't know. Because I know after that, Ashley Simpson has not put out any music to my knowledge. I don't believe so, but you guys can let me know in the comment section below. Um, what else? So yeah, with auto tune, you know, I mean, you could. You, I feel like with auto tunes, it did make people be like, oh, I don't have to be the best singer to get into the studio because if I get in the studio, here's somebody who's who's a great who's who's a a good, perfect, auto tune story. Kim Zosiak Beerman from Real Housewives of Atlanta. Target for the party. We all know that for that song originally started out as a country song. We all know Kim couldn't sing for nothing in this world. But when Candy got with Kim, Candy mixed and mastered that song so well that you really would think Kim could, if you didn't know who Kim was outside of Real Housewives of Atlanta, you would have really probably thought she could sing. But she can't. 
I mean, there are other housewives who probably, I know there are other housewives who've done auto-tune. Kenya has done auto-tunes for um, t that twirl song. <sighs> Luann. Oof, the cabaret. Who else? Erica. Erica Jane from Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm pretty positive Erica does auto-tune. And, it, you know, like I said, it takes someone who has who probably doesn't have any vocal capabilities and it makes them able to sing. So is it a bad thing? No. And for us to just say that, dude, you've used auto-tune. You've used auto-tune. So like I said, it just it's just be mindful of what you say to people. That's the mode that's the um the whole thing with this story. Be mindful of what you say to people. Like some people might take it in jest and let it roll off the off their back. Other people's may other people people's why did I say people's other people may internalize that and it fester and turn into what happened with T Pain. Depression. Just like I said, absolutely be mindful of what you say. Now Megan McCain, they were discussing it on The View the other day and I watched it and she, she likes T-Pain, nothing's wrong with that. But then she lost me when she was talking about the fact that Usher has not had a hit since Confessions. I was like, girl, are you serious? And she said it with the straightest of faces. I was like, are you serious? He hasn't had a hit since Confessions? Have you not, have you didn't, did you never hear the song Love in This Club? Um, he got a song with Rick. Oh God, his song with Rick Ross. What is the name of that song? The song with Rick Ross. What is the name of that song? It's in this. I know it's in this phone. Let me see it. I believe that's the name of the song. Then he got the song with Nicki Minaj. Um, OMG, yeah, the list goes on, but the song with Nicki Minaj, I'm trying to think about it, because I, I really, I got that, that shit does her first. I'm hotter than 100 degrees, a lot of bread, no sesame seeds, if I'm in your city, I'm signing your tickle bitties, I'm plotting on how I can take Cassie away from Diddy, the girls want a menage, yeah. Usher buzz me and everybody loves rain. If you fucking with me, really fucking with me. Go some go get some girls and bring them to me. If you with me, really me. let them put a hand. Little freak. That's it. I knew I would catch I knew I would get it. He, little freak. Little freak, let me see it. Yeah. Love in this club. Love in this club part two. The remix with Beyonce on it. Uh, what else he got? Like, he got hits. So for her to say he ain't had a hit since Confessions, which was 2004, I'm gonna need Megan to sit the fuck down somewhere. What's up with this phone? That's really weird. That's interesting that this is frozen on this Apple iTunes store, it's frozen. Oh yeah, but yeah, that's it. Let's move on. I hate this thing so much. All right, you guys, next up, let's discuss all the black girl magic that is going to be at the Tokyo Olympics, shall we? Like, we already knew that Simone Biles, she qualified for the Tokyo Olympics. So if you guys see me looking over here, I'm looking at my computer. So it says, Simone Biles, the Olympic gold medalist, has already managed to shatter glass ceilings at the most decorated, as the most decorated female gymnast in history and possibly the greatest gymnast of our time this summer. She's headed to Tokyo to secure her next big epic win. And then, you know, next up, let's just talk about 
Naomi Osaka. Now we know with Naomi Osaka, she has taken her break from um, you know tennis to get her mental health um, together. But Naomi will be showing up at the Tokyo Olympics to you know play her heart out. And then let's talk about Dallas, Texas native Miss Shikari Richardson. So Shikari Richardson, if you guys have not heard her name, if you guys have not saw her, Shikari ran last Saturday, I believe it was. I think it was last Saturday. She ran in the 100 meter dash and Mama was, I mean, she, she, now I will say that Shikari did not get the best start out of the gate, but she ended strong. And when she was running, she pointed to the, the, cl the clock and she did great. So Shikari, she's from Dallas, Texas. She went to Cardi Carter High School here in Dallas, and she went to she's um she's a, she's 21 years old. She's an LSU track and field sprinter. Um, she's already in talks and being the um, next Olympic sensation after her phenomenal performance at the U.S. Olympic Track and Field Trials. Um, so now she she secured her spot on Team USA, and she's going for the gold. Now here is something that I do want to discuss with Shikari because people are having these discussions about Shikari. So one, people are having conversations about her fingernails, how long they are, but I'm guessing people never saw Flojo and that she had long fingernails. Then they're talking about her wig, that she wore the orange wig. Honestly, with the orange wig, it's cute. I like it. And then people are talking about her physique. People are talking about she looks too masculine it's like really because she's she has she's toned like the fuck and then people are also talking about the fact that she is a lesbian like why do y'all care so much about who she's sleeping with what's like why do people care so much like i just don't understand that that's what bothers me and the comment that i saw about her her the wig the eyelashes the nails her body it was for men. It was for men, and I'm like, why do y'all give? Why do y'all care? Like, you go out on that field, and 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 you just dress as modestly as you can. Can you beat her? Absolutely not. Shikari, you go, girl. Fist pump a righteous for you. Like you did that. And then the fact that her mother just passed away. Like her mother just passed away, and she still went out and did that. Like, I gotta give you credit, my my little sister gotta give you credit like i love her because i'm look I'm, I'm looking down at my computer so i'm looking at her like the hair beautiful those nails the nails what's wrong with it her body her body is impeccable like again like i said about trick and the people in the clubhouse it's just a lot of internet trolls that are haters y'all just mad because y'all can't do what she's doing but once again congratulations to her so then we also have Allison Phoenix as a three-time world champion with nine Olympic medals under her belt. Felix has conquered her sports, her sports in ways that's more than impressive for someone of her caliber. Now the track star is headed back to her fifth Olympic Games and her first as a new mom. Oh, she's a new mother. Okay. And she looks amazing too. Um, I don't, so this is a WNBA pair. Aja Wilson, I don't know her. I don't, sorry, you guys, I don't watch NBA, WNBA. No offense to them. Um, we have an Olympic swimmer. Her name is Simone Manuel. So Manuel is an American um, record holder and reigning Olympic gold medalist for um, being the first black woman to win an individual swimming gold medal at the 2016 Summer Olympics. Despite being diagnosed with over, overtraining syndrome just days before she qualified for the Olympic Games, she fought through the fatigue and punched her ticket to this year's game. Oh, you go, sister. You go. Then there's a young um, lady named Crystal Dunn. She's a soccer star. It says she excels in all things sports, and she's looking forward to taking her talents back to Tokyo this year to compete for Team USA. Though her last, though her last trip to the Olympics didn't result in a gold medal for her team, she's confident things will be different this year. You go. Um... Let's see. Naya Tapper. Naya Tapper is a South Carolina native and a rugby hopeful. 
the, and rugby hopeful is keeping hope alive that she'll achieve her Olympic dream in Tokyo this year. Tapper is one of U.S. women's seven. Tapper is one of U.S. women's sevens all-time so scorers, and she's determined to bring back the Olympic gold. Now, rugby. What the hell is rugby? Oh, I know what rugby is. I know what rugby is because I have a cousin who watches all anything sports, and I saw rugby. Rugby is that sport. I know what rugby is. Um, then there's a Delilah Muhammad. Delilah, she's the Olympic champion and a and the Olympic champion is a beast in one of her sport's most grueling events, the 400 meter hurdles. Ooh, the hurdles. And she set on making um, sure Tokyo's 400 meter hurdle event is unmissable this time around. So yeah, we're gonna root her on. We're gonna root on a Kendra Kenny Harrison. This is, the form, this is a former Kentucky star. She missed the mark in qualifying for the 2016 Olympics, but she redeemed herself to prove that she has what it takes to represent Team USA in the Olympic Open in, in the Tokyo Olympics for their 100 meter hurdles. Hurdles. Like, see, here's the thing, and I'm, I'm and I'm looking at. So they have pictures of all the ladies that I'm talking, telling you, telling you guys about. And the track stars, like all of them, have the same physique as Shikari. Like all of them have the same physique. So I just don't understand why people felt so strongly and so inclined to discuss her features. I feel like when they, when she said her girlfriend told her to wear that orange hair, I think that's what got a lot of people. When she said her girlfriend, I just really feel like it was that. It was her girlfriend. Um, then we have Ashley Johnson as one of the best goalkeepers in the world. Johnson has completely dominated her sport, her sport to become a water polo trailblazer in her own right. In 2016, she became the first black woman to make a U.S. Olympic women's water polo team. You go, sis. And her hope now is to continue breaking barriers for women that look just, that look like her. You go, sis. You go. Then there is a Deja Young. Um, she's a track and field athlete and a um, Paralympic. She's a Paralympic hopeful that's vying for a gold medal at this year's Tokyo Games. Even though she was born with a biracial plexus injury. Oh, that ain't biracial. I can't pronounce that word. It's B. It look is B oh so I'm guessing she has a um a disability, okay. So whatever her so whatever her is B R A C H I A L, brachial I think that's what it is brachial plexus injury that caused caused nerve damage, and limited mobility to her right shoulder. Her disability hasn't slowed her down at all. If anything, it motivates her even more. Oh, okay. Love it. Now this sister, I cannot pronounce her name, so we will spell her name. B A S H T I Cunningham. So Miss Cunningham is more than just the daughter of former NFL star quarterback Randall Cunningham. She's one of the best women's high jumper in a country who just qualified for this year's Olympics. Go. So yeah, I just want to highlight everybody. I'm I'm gonna keep going. Like if we keep um, I can't pronounce her name either. Javian, I believe. Oliver. So she's the former Kentucky track star. She's also a teammate of Chicago. Oh, she's Shakari um, Richardson's teammate. And the two time and the two uh, um, Tokyo bound athletes are both headed off to show the world what Team USA track has to offer. Okay. Come on now. Um. Here's another one. It's a T-E-A-H-N-A Daniels. So Daniels placed third in the finals of the 100 meter at the U.S. Olympic track and field trials this past week in securing her spot <coughs> alongside teammates Richardson and Oliver to compete in the Olympics. This black girl magic man. Loving it. And we got a Christina Clemens. So she's a 31-year-old Maryland native. She made the U.S. Olympic team wearing two mini bags too many bags of Doritos as earrings. Okay. 
not only did her third place finish in the not only not only did her third place finish in the hundred meter hurdles earn her a spot on Team USA, it also sparked a viral moment from the famous clip um, from for the famous ship brand. Okay. Um. Let's see. We have a sprinter. I definitely can't pronounce her name. It's spelled Q U A N E R A, and it's her last name is Hayes. So she's a sprinter. She went up against women who attended some of the most prestigious track and field schools in the world. Yet and still, she beat out the competition, including Allison Phoenix, to become a U.S. national champion and Olympic qualifier. Man, I'm just loving seeing this. It's a lot. Oh, this is so we're at the last one. So, the last one is a a a a, a waiting, wait waitaline, Jonathan. I believe that's how you pronounce that. So she's a former Doherty track star. So the former Doherty track star is another example of black girl magic that clinched a spot on the U.S. women's track and field team at the this year's U.S. Olympic trials. The 23-year-old placed third in the 400 finals and now her steps and now steps her next stops. The way that they worded this is terrible. The 23-year-old placed third in the 400 finals and now her oh and now her next stop is Tokyo. All right you guys so yeah that's all the black girl magic that is going to be at the Tokyo Olympics this year. I don't know when the Olympics are scheduled to air. I think it's sometime next month. Let's see. When is it Tokyo? It's sometime next month, you guys. Um, but yeah. Congratulations to all the ladies that I named that are going to be in the Tokyo Olympics. Are you guys interested in watching the Tokyo Olympics? Let me know in the comment section below. And we will move on, you guys. Didn't mean for that to go as long as it did, but I just want to highlight everyone that was in that article that I found. And I guess this might be the last thing that we talk about this week. Lala Anthony. So Lala Anthony has finally filed for divorce from Carmelo Anthony. Honestly, it was long overdue. I mean, when was the last time he was in the... Because the last time he was in the news was about that other girl that he had... The, we don't say allegedly because I don't know if that was his baby or not. But the last baby that he, you know, he had on Lala and she's still stuck around. Like Lala, honestly, when it comes to Melo... Lala has been sticking around for God knows what. I don't know what in the hell she's been sticking around for. Like, dude is making you look bad. Actually, since we're talking about Lala, let's just mention her, her dumbass friend as well. We'll talk about her in just a minute. But yeah, Lala finally filed for divorce from Carmelo Anthony. Now, it's come out as alleged, because I don't know if there's a DNA. I mean, I don't know what to what. So I'm going to say that that last baby that the girl said she had, that's alleged. But why didn't she leave then? <sighs> like, I, I wonder, like, you wonder sometimes when it comes to men and women, but most specifically women, I never understand why women stick around with a non-monogamous man and you're in a monogamous relationship and he cheats on you and he has a baby on the side. I know people say, hey, let me try to fix my family. Let me try to repair my family. Absolutely. For me, it would be a deal breaker. That's just me keeping it real with you guys. I think for me, it would be a deal breaker because once you do something like that, once you, you do, you, you know, you violate my trust, it is very gonna, it's going to be next to impossible to get that trust back. And then I know she would, I know people might be like, she, well, she probably would say for her son, but why would you want your son to see some stuff like that? Do you, want, do you want your son to think that that is okay to treat a woman like that? Like, do you want your child to see that you're in an unhappy environment? Like, that's what I don't understand. Why women stay in situations like that? And while we're talking about Lala, let's talk, like I said, let's talk about her dumbass friend, Khloe Kardashian. Tristan. 
so I was watching um, on the Shade Room because I don't watch Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I've never watched it. So you know they had they had a reunion special with Andy Cohen. So Andy was talking about with Chloe. She was talking about Tristan, and she was talking about Jordan Woods. I don't know why Chloe feels that she is deserving of an apology. Girl, are you gonna go and apologize to the ladies that you've done this shit to before? I.e. Um, Trina, I.e. Larsa Pippen, I.e. who else? I mean, your family has been doing the same shit for years. Your family has been doing the same shit for years. So do y'all owe y'all? So then do y'all out need to go out and apologize? To the women that y'all taking name in from them like do y'all need to do that so at this point allegedly i mean they're saying that they're done but i don't believe that in any sense of the word that they're done so tristan has once been once again been caught cheating on chloe girl how many ways does he have to make you look stupid and foolish you went into an early labor because of this fool cheating on you Girl, the fuck? The dick can't be that good. I, 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 I don't understand. And it's like Erica says, Erica De Niro, Erica De Niro, shout out to Erica. It's like she says, like, you know, y'all go and get these bodies to look like black women, but then these men don't treat y'all any better than they treat black women. And I actually agree with what Erica said yesterday, when I was watching a video yesterday. I feel like when it comes to the Kardashians, specifically, specifically talking about them, when it comes to them and, and the black men that they get with, the black men treat them worse than they do black women. I mean, especially, look at Chloe. Look at Chloe. She is the poster child of it. Poster child for it. You know what? Maybe they like it. Hell, if they like it, I love it. I, I just don't understand it. You just look like a doormat. You just look ridiculous. But see, when it comes to Chloe, I think the thing with Chloe is Chloe has a lack of self-esteem. That's what it is with her. Chloe lacks self-esteem. I mean, look at Chloe's body. Look at the dysmorphia of her body. Like her nose, I don't even know what, at this point it just looks like cartilage because I don't know what that is with her nose. I don't know what that is. Like you have done so much work to yourself to keep her ain't shit you know what it's just it's it's it's, it's mind-blowing it's baffling it's interesting that <sighs> but you know what they like it and that's it so we we're done you guys that's it for this week's hottest topics let me know what you guys think of every topic that we have discussed in this video um we do this every friday same time same place same channel all right, you guys. So I hope that you guys have a great weekend. I will see you guys later for the re um, the season finale of Ready to Love. And uh, we will also be back for the review for Love After Lockup. All right, you guys. So that's it. As always, you guys do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button on the channel. Hit the notification bell button, you guys, so that you guys are notified of when I drop any videos. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell button. I said that. Why am I repeating that? But yeah, you guys, do all that stuff. We're going to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Repeat is rinse, repeat. I don't know. Whatever. Um. Yeah, you guys, be safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands. Please wear your mask or not. Whichever one you guys do choose to do, just for me, be safe, you guys. Be blessed and socially distance, you guys, because I see that the people are starting to lax up on that as well. Girl, if somebody comes up to you and they're they not within six feet, tell them to back up. But yeah, you guys, that's it. I hope you guys have a, again, once again, I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you guys later. So until the next one, you guys, bye.